呃，不知道听了他这番话之后，大家会不会对接下来发生的事情就更加期待了呢？那我来给大家介绍一下第一位 speaker， 他呢，嗯、呃，出生在荷兰一个呃音乐世家，他四岁的时候便开始拉小提琴，九岁的时候开始弹钢琴，十六岁的时候呢，有了人生人生的第一次指挥的经验。在鹿特丹学了三年指挥之后，他受天才指挥家呃呃切利比达克的要求，到了呃。莫里黑去继续了三年的指挥学习之后呢，就会就在从事一些指挥教学的工作。二零零九年的时候，他来到了武汉大学学习汉语。一年之后呢，他停止留心，在武汉大学自费学习起了考古，来研究中国的古典乐器。他十分他十分热爱考古，他也十分喜欢中国。他就是绿德，我们欢迎他上场。乘着公交车，看到东湖有四有三个外老外，他们在打鱼，很奇怪。我过来，我穿这个衣服，就周围的中国人都都惊讶了，怎么？可能有奇怪的。这<笑>就是 transcontinental exchange and enrichment。首先听到一些音乐。Sort of Chinese dress. It's very light and comfortable. And Xi Han. I think it's, it's it looks nice too. But I see a lot of Chinese people, especially in business, even your chairman, who is wearing this Western suit, suffocating himself with this horrible tie. And so, yeah, if you adapt Western style, you have to think two two times. It's really it's really the worst to do it. So Chinese and Western contact has a very long history. Maybe, maybe 2,000 years, even more. We don't know exactly. There are some traces on Buddhist sculpture. Maybe they have been influenced by the Greek sculpture. But at least, if you can believe the, what they say, there was an Italian guy who came to China in the 13th century called Marco Polo, and he brought a pizza to, to China. You know? <laughs> You're laughing. Okay. 
No, the Chinese say he brought pizza back to Italy. <laughs> no? But in that time there was no copyright. It was a good time. I think copyright is a very strange, strange thing. You know, in classical music, you have copyrights. That means the composer he dies, but 70 years after he is dead, in, in Europe, huh? They still, the family still gets the money from what he's playing, and what he's selling scores, etc., etc. Sometimes it makes very awkward situations. For example, a very famous French composer called Ravel, La Ware. He composed this bolero. Maybe you know this. Very famous composer. This piece, uh, maybe every two minutes, it's played in the world somewhere. So, ring, go, shame so, he married the first wife, she died. Then he married the second wife, and then Ravel died, and then the second wife married a hair cutter. You know, the fashion. And then the second wife died, but the hair cutter, he, got, he earned a lot of money. You know, he didn't, he didn't play an instrument, couldn't compose, and then nothing. You know, that's, the, that's the advantage of, of copyright. So, it's good in China, you can just copy as you like. So. I think that's good. Um, yeah, so the story with Marco Polo, and then, but then is the most important maybe, or the most heavy story of Chinese Western exchange starts in the 19th century, and it's a very sad story. When I when I first learned it in, in, in Chinese uh, history, I was really really in my heart really not good. And it's the, all the European European powers came into China not to possess the land, but just to take their richness and their beauty, and. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that my country didn't come, but I'm, I'm Dutch from Holland. Uh, so in the 19th century, century, all the foreign powers came to China, brought also their culture, of course, architecture. You can see on the Changjiang Chang riverside, there's a lot of houses built by the foreigner, and they brought also other things. And in the 20th century, I think it's marked by the Chinese importing Western culture. And in the beginning of the 20th century, they imported literature. You love to, to read the French, Balzac, etc., the Russian. Also, the music, that's where it started some Chinese orchestras, etc. Uh, philosophy, um, architecture, and of course, most important, the philosophy of Karl Marx, which is still today very popular in China. And so, 21st century, we don't know. I'm very curious how this will go on. I know that. A lot, most of the young Chinese people are regarding the West and Europe as a sort of paradise, as a place of freedom. But what is freedom, actually? So, I don't know when I started to be interested in uh, Chinese culture. I don't remember exactly. But I was born in a family of musicians. And I think in the room of my mother, I already listened to a lot. Because my father was playing the violin. My mother playing the piano, and in house in the house there was always music. So I know that from the moment I was conscious about it, I wanted to do something with music, and I always had this feeling that through music you can get the feeling of what is what is the feeling to be free. Uh, when I was four years old, and when I was one year old, my mother mother told when I was one year old, I told her, "Yeah, mama, when I can touch the keyboard, I want to to learn the piano." But she didn't be serious. Now, at, uh, when I was four years old, I wanted to play the violin, and my father, they, they all agreed, so I started the violin. And my father had the idea to start himself teaching me. That was a bad idea. <laughs> I was a very naughty guy, naughty boy. I didn't listen to him, and I got him furious. And that is really an, a big effort because my father never got furious. But he was really furious, and he chased me through the house, both with our violin in the hand. And and I ended up the staircase until he decide, decided that it would be better to put me to a real teacher. And of course, there I was very attentive and studied well and uh, no, not at all naughty boys. So okay. At nine, I started to play the piano. And also, I, I participated in a lot of chamber music groups, orchestras. And so I discovered the richness of the orchestra. An orchestra is like an instrument, like a violin, like a flute, like a piano. There are only two big differences. The first is, there are a lot of people playing together, isn't it? The second is, it's much richer in colors, in, in different tones, in short, long, loud, soft. 
uh, the repertoire is huge, from from Renaissance, Baroque, Classic, Romantic, till until now. Yes, it's, even film music, etc. Everything is written for orchestra. So after a few years, I decided that I wanted to be conductor. I like to work with groups, and I like to, of course, I love music. So it's a good combination. But my family didn't like it at all. At the idea. They say, oh, even my beloved uncle, he said, Luther, please, don't study music. Because you can only become a music teacher. You know, what's wrong with a music teacher? If you grow, if you later, you marry, you get children, and they want to learn the piano or the violin, if there's no music teacher, what do you do? Well, I think music teacher is a good thing, and it's a really honorable job. It's very nice. But it's a job for idealists. Because you don't earn a lot of money, but you can love your job. That's, that's the other side. So, this is the support of my father and mother. I, I entered the Academy of Music in Rotterdam and I studied there for three years. I didn't learn a lot, I didn't learn a lot because the teaching was not that good. But I did a lot of experience with my with, with orchestras. Every week I conducted three orchestras and a lot of experience was good. And after three years, the head of the department of music he said, Hey Luther, tonight in Amsterdam there's a concert, you should go there. I, I read the program and the name of the conductor, never heard of. The name of the orchestra, never heard of. And the ticket price, very high. And there was students, and I like you students, maybe some are rich, but most of you are, you have no, no much money. And I didn't have much money, I didn't have a ticket But, however, I went. And it was an amazing concert, and that's where, where I met my future conducting teacher, Thierry Bidake. You can look on the internet, yes, there's a lot of, Yo, who has a lot of... Uh, <laughs> films. It's not like it's not like real, of course, but it's a little bit like it. So a bit later, he invited me to come to Munich, Munich, the Munich, to study with him, and I studied there for for years. And he, I think, I can say that he made me from an amateur musician to a professional musician. What's the difference? An amateur musician, or when I was an amateur musician, and I saw around me a lot of them like that, he, he takes a piece of music, he plays it, and says, oh, this bar, these ten bars, they are beautiful. These, these five bars, I think it's boring. And this is a nice piece, wow, this is great. No, this I don't like very much more. Fast, let's go fast. That's amateurs. So what's professional musician? He started often with the question, what's music? Is sound music? Maybe not. But sound can become music. Sound can become music under certain circumstances, under certain conditions. Now what are these conditions? <coughs> Actually, there's only one. A piece of music is a structure. Now you can say has a structure, I want to say is a structure. A piece of music is a structure. Every piece of music has or is its own structure. Although some pieces of music, some structures are similar, but it's, n it's n uh, never the same. A piece of music starts, it's a living structure, because it's always now and here that it's created. That's why a disc or a video or a yoku, I don't know, it's never the real feeling of when you go to a concert. And now you have a wonderful concert hall in Wuhan since five or ten years. It's in Thai, in your thing. It's very good acoustic, so go there and see the difference between real, really to be in it, or just to listen to a disc and uh, earphones. So, a structure, a piece of music is starting in a certain call. In the beginning there's nothing special, it's a certain call. It starts, to be, it starts to give you a certain impression in the beginning, the first subject, until it meets its main contrast, the first contrast, but also its main contrast. It's like in a fairy tale, you know, first they, pre they present you a prince riding his horse, Carl's castle, they talk, tell about his longing, or maybe his uh, lost love, or his uh, family, etc. They present his life, his world. And then in a certain moment, he meets a beautiful girl, and he fell in love, he fell in love. But it's not that easy, you know. You read those stories when you were young, you know? It's not that easy. You have to go through a lot of difficulties to come to love and to real harmony. 
And this way, through the difficulties in the music, it's called development. It's the devel development part. It's the part where the initial conflict is, de is developed until its maximum. When do we reach the Mexica maximum? When the total potential of the conflict has been exploited. Like the prince and the, and the, and the, and the beautiful lady. Families don't agree. Maybe there are other guys who like the girl. Other girls who like the guy. They have jealousy and they will fight. And maybe the girl is poor and the man rich or vice versa. Or, 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 I don't know. There are lots of problems. And this conflict will grow up, grow up, grow up till a certain point. And it's called culmination point. Gouch hall. That's culmination point. Or you can also say, also say turning point. Why turning point? Because it's changed completely. Instead of going further, it's going back. Going back to the end. Although in time you go further, but the idea is to go back. You go back to the end. It's uh, in the music, it's in the, in the fairy tale, prince and princess. The family will agree, there are no conquerors anymore, uh, they, they, they have no differences anymore, and finally they will marry, and they will be happy, and there will com be complete harmony and love. In the music, it's by presenting the two elements who were in the beginning of the piece, reason for conflict, but in the end it will be presented as harmonious, they will be in the same level, they will be compatible. So in that way we can come back to a certain calm from which we started. This calm at the end is so similar to the calm in the beginning that it is complete identity. Complete identity from the end and the beginning in a musical, in a piece of musical, uh, of, of, of classical music. How can we be so sure, sure that the end is exactly identical to the beginning? Because some pieces of music are lasting for 10 minutes, 20 minutes. There are pieces of music, one piece of music for 40 minutes in, in classical music. How can we be sure that the end is identical to the beginning? That's only when starting the piece, the end is already in the beginning. That means that not only the end is in the beginning, when can the end be in the beginning? When you know how far you go and how, how you have to go back. It's like when you are going to the mountain, you want to climb a mountain, but you have to be back before dawn, before the night falls, before the sunset. You have to know how high is the mountain, what difficult, difficulties can you, can you find on your way up, what difficulties on your way down. Huh? You have to know on, this, on the beginning, you have to know exactly the realm of your, of, your, of, your, of, your, of, your, of your way, up and down, of your story. And then you can know that the end is in the beginning. And it makes that our mind is in a very special state. Because in the beginning, you are already conscious of the whole way. The end is in the beginning. And every element in the music, every element of the, the score, and the score is a lot of black points, you know, a music score, you get you have you have full, and all the <laughs> so, you have to, to find every exact place of every element in this, in this way. The, the, this place of every element is not just um, a theoretical place, it's a functional place. Every element has its function. Every function, that means having a function, as, means having a potential. Potential means having an energetic relation to what's before and what's end, what's what's, what is after it. Every element has an energetic, from, from, from energy point of view, a point in, the, in this way up and this way down. When we're talking energy, when it's a process of energy, it can go, it, can, it doesn't need our all day thinking capacities of the mind. And that is how we can be completely free. Because if the mind doesn't have its all day thinking, it can be empty. Or better to say, it can be completely full, full of what you're doing, of this music. And it is a very strange contradiction, isn't it? 
Because how can we be free if every element has already its, its functional place? That's a very big contradiction, but it is like that. How can it be like that? Every element is already known where it has to be put. The way is pointed out, but you have to realize it. In these 20 minutes, you have to realize that every element gets its place where it belongs. But in a state of mind, you lose the feeling of time. There is no duration anymore. Maybe you have had that experience that you suddenly you are confronted with a, a, a beautiful landscape, or you read a book and you lose the, 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 the notion of time, or you are a really good film or something. Huh? So it's a little bit like that. You wake up from this situation and you say, hey, two hours gone like this, where, where was I? Yeah? It's a little bit like that. So, the mind is completely full of this and has, and you have to fill up the whole way, this energetic way from the, from the musical piece. That means you are in complete activity, at the same time, complete passivity. Because you cannot change something in this way. You have to follow the way. It's not only following it. You have to create it at the same time. You have to create a way which is already given at the beginning. You have always this in your mind. The end, the culmination point, and all the elements will, will find their place. And, that, and I think there will, will, will join the Chinese philosophy of uh, Lao Tzu. What does he say? He says, Tao Chang Wu Wei are Wu Bu Wei. That means complete activity and complete passivity at the same time. So I would say, don't forget your own culture by looking at the rest. And thank you very much. <laughs>